This video is going to show you how to set up audio for a single camera. If you can get a direct feed from the soundboard or mixer from the venue, that is always going to be your best option. To get audio out from the soundboard, you're going to plug in a cable to the tape output left, tape output right, and you're going to plug the other end of your cable into the red mic input on your camera. This will allow you to get audio directly from your soundboard. Later on, I'll show you how to mix the audio from the internal mic with the audio from your soundboard. If you do not have a cable with just red and white RCA, you can use the yellow, red, and white cable that comes with your camera. Not all venues allow us to use their sound or they don't have a soundboard set up for us to get a direct audio feed from. Let me show you some more things that you can do with just the camera to get the optimal sound for your production. I will demonstrate using a Canon XA35 camera. The XA series cameras are similar, and this will help you with other models of the XA series as well. The XA series comes with a detachable handle with two audio inputs. You have input, input one and input two, and you have manual controls that you can use to adjust the settings of the audio. These cameras can help you get the perfect audio when you only have one camera. Here are a couple of scenarios and setups that you may consider. You are shooting a sit-down interview and you connect two lavalier microphones. If you're out and about shooting an ENG, you can set up a shotgun mic and a handheld mic. If you are shooting a concert or speech in an auditorium, you can get line-in audio from the soundboard and record the sound of the audience. Uh, clapping or applause using the built-in mic. If you are in a meeting that has live translation, you can have one channel record the primary language and one channel record the secondary language. Essentially, you can have two channels of audio that you can mix and match to get the perfect sound that you need. Let me start by showing you how to plug in the microphone. To plug in the microphone, first of all, you notice there's input one, input two. This is an XLR connector. I'm going to demonstrate using this shotgun microphone that has a built-in XLR cable. This built-in XLR cable has three pins in it that line up with the three pins on the input. Make sure you match up your pins. You push the pins in and you will hear a click. When it's time to unplug the microphone, you simply push the pin and you pull out. You do not twist or yank. You have to make sure to release this pin, which will allow you to pull out the microphone cable. So I plug it in. If I need to release it, I push and I pull out, and this allows me to release. Now that I have the microphone plugged in, I'm going to loosen this thumb screw, and I can mount the microphone by tightening down the thumb screw. And there you can see I have my shotgun microphone mounted into input one. This will allow me to have audio coming in from that channel of the microphone. With this mic, you actually have to plug in an XLR cable. Make sure it clicks, and then you plug in the XLR cable into the corresponding slot there. The bottom of this mic has a shoe adapter that you can adjust, that you can loosen this dial, and you slide it on. Let's go through our scenarios. You can plug in two lavalier microphones into the inputs. This will allow you to do a sit-down interview where two people are mic'd. The second scenario is that you are out and about doing an ENG. What you'll do is set up your shotgun microphone, connect your handheld microphone to channel two input. This will allow you to have two audio inputs that you can use to record and get the sound at your venue. The pickup pattern of a shotgun mic picks up what's in directly in front of it. The handheld mic lets you be off access or away from the front of the camera to speak 
and pick up your audio, your voice clearer. We have both mics plugged in. We want to test to make sure our audio is working. You can see that there are two inputs. There's input one and input two. This is bringing in the audio from the inputs that we have plugged in. We can control these inputs in a myriad of ways. If you do not see the display showing up, simply press the display button on the camera and it will make it show up. With my audio meter showing, my goal is to get the audio between 10 and 0 without the audio peaking or hitting 0 and going louder to cut off or clip the audio that we hear. There are multiple ways to set up our inputs. One of the best resources there is for audio is to use the manual that came with the book. The manual is a great resource. It will help you understand how to set up and change the audio settings. If you do not have access to the book or you're out on a remote location, you can always go to the manufacturer's website and look up the model of camera that you're using and find the manual. You can also search for the user manual online by typing in the model number and the word manual inside of a search. Let me go through and show you some of the things that you can change with the audio. Let me show you the manual settings first. This top row deals with channel 1 or input 1. This bottom row deals with channel 2 or input 2. With my microphones, I have a couple of settings. I have channel 1 input. Right here I have my shotgun plugged in. And I have three different options for manual settings. I can change the, the type of input to be line, mic, or mic plus 48 volts or phantom power. If I switch this to simply mic, you'll notice now that the audio has now cut out for my shotgun mic. And the reason that is, is because this microphone needs phantom power or electricity for it to work. If I switch it back to 48 volts, you'll notice that the audio has now come back into this channel. If I switch it to line, as I talk, you'll notice that it's pretty much all cut out. Line is designed for when you're getting sound directly from a soundboard. Uh, when we work graduation, we will plug in a XLR cable from the sound people and we'll make sure to set this to line. So because I want to hear the audio that's coming from this microphone, I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to mic plus 48 volts. Remember, you do need phantom power for our shotgun mic to work. The next button here is A or M. That's automatic or manual. What it does is it has the camera adjust the audio to make it the right amount of sound. If you set it to automatic, it's going to try to automatically adjust the audio. I don't like the automatic settings. I prefer using the manual setting. And you can use this dial to reduce the amount of audio. As I turn here, you can see if I make it minimum, the audio has disappeared. But if I raise it up, you can see the audio increases. Depending on the venue you're at, you may have to adjust this audio. We can see the audio meters on the camera, and we can see what's happening with the sound that we're using. But we cannot hear what's going on. The next thing, and one of the most important things to remember is when you're dealing with audio, is to always use headphones. These cameras have a built-in headphone jack. You can plug your headphones into the headphone jack. This will allow you to listen to your audio uh, to see if there's things that you cannot see in the audio meter. For example, you may have an airplane flying overhead. There may be some static on your mic that you cannot see, um, but when you listen to it, you can then hear what the sound sounds like. Now here's something to think about. A microphone records in mono audio, which means it only is designed to record one channel of audio. Typically, if you only have one channel of audio in, cameras will often switch or convert mono audio to stereo audio. Now, these cameras allow you to record each channel independently. If you have two mics plugged in and you have two different channels set up, you're going to hear the audio from one mic coming from one headphone and the audio from the other mic coming from the other headphone. You want to make sure that you have the audio that you want the way you want it. You can adjust the settings so that you hear both in both ears, but we will not go through that right now. So we have both of our audios set up. I can now adjust 
my bottom channel as well. I can change it to minimum, I can lower it down, and I can bring it up. And this will allow the audio to change and how it works. If your audio is not coming through to your microphones, you want to check to make sure that you are turned on, not off. If you are turned off, your camera will not be recording the audio from your microphones. Instead, it will be using the audio from your built-in microphone. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. So now we get the audio from the microphones. Now for the microphones, if you're in a loud, noisy setting, this setup is great if you're at a club fair or maybe a science fair and students are presenting and you want to move the camera around and hand them a microphone, you can hand the student presenting the microphone and you can record with the shotgun microphone. After, when you're editing, you can choose which audio came out better and you can choose either to have the left channel or the right channel as your audio or you can have a stereo mix of both audios. This is one setup that you can do with your mics. Let's say that you only have one microphone. If you only have one microphone, my recommendation would be to use a shotgun microphone. I'm going to unplug my handheld microphone and only have a shotgun microphone. When I have unplugged this shotgun microphone, you will notice now that my input to, there's no audio, there's no sound. If you were to listen on your headphones, you would notice that the audio is only coming in on one headphone. If we want to make it so it goes to both headphones and so that's recording on both channels, we can adjust the settings inside of the camera. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the function on the touch screen, then I tap on menu, and I want to adjust the audio so that it is going through to both. So on the camera setting, I scroll all the way down to where it says channel to input, and it's gonna give me a couple of options. Input one means it's gonna duplicate whatever's coming into channel one. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that, and I close out. And now you can see whatever's inside of input one is coming out of input two. I can adjust the volume of this by turning the dial. Again, this will adjust the volume independently. Sometimes this is good if you're in a very loud area and it's hard to hear the audio that's coming through. I like to adjust one a little bit lower so that way I have two sound levels that I can work with after when I am editing. That's how you can make one microphone come out of both channels. Another thing that you can do is have, instead of using input one as input two, you can use the built-in microphone. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this. I'm gonna tap on it, scroll down to channel two input. And I'm gonna choose built select that and now you can see my input has changed it now says input one and internal input one is still my shotgun microphone internal is the microphone that's built into the camera I'm going to show you by scratching the two different microphones you can see which microphone is which based on which one I scratch. You can see the sound, and if you had headphones on, you could hear the difference. Now you might ask, why would you need this? This is great if you're shooting a concert. Maybe you have a line in, in channel one, uh, from the soundboard, but a concert without the audience and the applause sounds strange. You can see the audience in your shots, but if you're only getting what's coming through the mics, you might not hear the audience. And so, I like to mix in a little bit of the internal microphone, which will then allow you to have both the audience sound as well as the sound either from your shotgun microphone or from your line in. This also works if you have a wireless microphone system that you would like to connect into the camera as well. Maybe you have your shotgun microphone mounted on here, but you would like to hear somebody speaking further away from a wireless microphone. 
you can also use a wireless mic. This is a wireless mic transmitter and a wireless mic receiver. You plug the microphone into the transmitter, it sends the signal to the receiver, the receiver will then take the signal and we can bring it in. I can mount this microphone on the shoe and this microphone has an out and an earplug. I'm going to go ahead and plug the out. I want to plug this end of the cable into the mic. So now you see I've plugged in my out. So now you can see I've plugged in my out. I've plugged it to the end. I'm going to turn this on to F1. F stands for frequency. You have two different frequencies that you can use. I then want to plug in my microphone, turn it to F1 as well, and now I have this microphone that is going to send a signal to this receiver. It's going to transmit it to the receiver. The light turns green if I'm on the right channel. If I'm on the wrong channel, notice how it turns red. So I want to make sure I'm on the correct channel. I'm on F1 for both of these. I now have a green light. I have my out plugged in to my mic. So I should be getting sound from the microphone and from that one as well. To test it, I could walk away with this microphone and see if it's coming in. But since I'm in such a confined location, I'm going to again revert back to my scratch test. So you can see when I scratch this microphone, it's coming in. When I scratch this microphone, it's coming in. So this is another way that you can set up audio to make sure that you're getting the shotgun sound as well as the wireless sound. The same way is how you would plug in to a soundboard If you do not have an XLR input, you would plug your soundboard in here and you would get both audios. You would get the audio from the soundboard as well as the audio from your microphone. Let's say that you have audio coming in from your line and it's too loud. On some versions, the XA10 model, there's actually a button here that's for attenuation and that will soften the audio. On the newer versions, to soften or attenuate the audio coming in, you simply tap on function, go to menu, scroll down again all the way to the bottom, and here it says mic ATT period. It's set to automatic. You can turn this on, you can turn it off, and what this does is it tries to cap out the audio before it gets too loud. Now inside of this, inside of the Canon X835, you have you can you can turn on mic attenuation, you can turn on low cut, you can also change mic trimming. I'm not going to go through the details of this. You can also add in a limiter, but essentially these things are to help you to get better audio with your shots. The best way to figure out how this all works is to grab a camera, a couple of microphones, and go out and try it. Make sure you have a pair of headphones so you can hear what you're doing and take some notes as you're doing it. If you come up with something that works well for you, write it down. Write down what you plugged in where and what your settings were. If you have questions, write those down and come back and talk to your instructor. Now that you've recorded audio on a camera with two different channels, let me show you how to choose which channel you want to use inside of Final Cut Pro. There's a couple of ways you can do it. First of all, you can find your video inside of your clip bin and you can select it. With it selected, you can go over to your inspector, click on audio, go down to the camera that you're on, and you can change it from stereo to dual mono. This will now bring up each audio track on its own. You can choose to turn one or the other off, or you could keep them both and see how they sound. Let's say I would like to do just one clip on my story or my timeline. I can select the clip. Now if I play through the clip, if I play through the clip, you'll notice input 1 peaks a bit higher than input 2, a lot higher. 
You can also look down here at the audio meter as it plays through. And you have two different channels set up. You're going to hear... Now you can see the left channel is coming up much more than the right channel when I play through this. It matches the input on my meter from the camera. If I would like to use only my input one audio, I can select this clip, come up to audio, and I can change stereo, which plays what was from your input one on the left channel and input two on the right channel. If I switch this to dual mono, it plays both on both channels. And you look at the meters over here when I play it. The audio from one mic coming from one headphone and the audio from the other mic. Do you see how it's balanced out the audio that's playing? I only want to use the audio from input one. So I'm going to deselect mono two and now the audio will be the same. Both left and right channel will come from input one. The audio from the other mic coming from the other headphone. You want to make sure that you have the audio that you want the way you want it. So this is how you can adjust which track is being used or which channel, left or right, the sound is coming from. Again, you can do dual mono stereo or you can explore with reverse stereo. I hope this video has been helpful in understanding how to have better audio with a single camera shoot. Thank you and have a great day.